Hello, Jonathan. Thank you for, for joining us. Hi, Helen. It's an honor. <laughs> so it, it's great to have you because um, you, you've been very um, supportive at Counterweight. We have about 70% of the people who come to us are employees. They are in a state of extreme isolation, anxiety, stress. They're being asked to affirm things they don't believe. They're, they're worried about losing their jobs. They're worried about being ostracized. And I, I think this is, is the epitome and the, the bit of cancel culture that often gets missed because we see the celebrities, don't we? But we don't see the average person who is trying to feed his or her family and house them. And um, those are the people who, who counterweight see. So um, what, what, what are your thoughts on this sort of aspect of cancel culture? It was a big surprise, Helen, but it turned out that pressure on employers and pressure from employers has turned out to be the soft underbelly of modern free speech culture, which we didn't really know before because employers hadn't particularly been targeted very often. But all too willing, they're all, excuse me, all too often employers are willing to throw a controversial employee under the bus just because some people go after them. And all too often, employers are willing to put pressure on employees to, to state and ver political views, social views that they really don't hold. And it's very important to begin to organize so that there are resources um, available to help people cope with this. I, I agree. I mean, at, at Counterweight, we try to give people practical advice as to how to address the issue with their employer in the most effective and principled way possible. We try to minimize the risk um, to themselves of, of being misunderstood or um, you know, penalized in some way. Um, and this is quite difficult. Some of the people who come to us are employers but they're small employers and they are under a lot of pressure from larger industries. So we'll hear from small businesses asking our advice, how can I have policies and training programs that are not woke, that are liberal, that allow freedom of belief and speech without um, everybody else in the business um, blackballing me <laughs> and, losing my, um, and, and losing my business. So th this is um, another thing that we're trying to do, help people create policies like this, which, which still allow for freedom of belief. I think that's one way to push back. Well, there are a couple of things I very much admire about the approach you've taken so far, Helen, and, and that's one of them. It's, it's not that counterweight is an equally illiberal group on the other side of the politics. It's that it's trying to say, look, we agree with the goals of a less racist society, but let's find a liberal way to do that. You can't beat something with nothing. And employers have a legitimate interest in trying to have workplaces that are as free as possible of, of bigotry and prejudice. It just shouldn't be done in coercive ways. A second thing I very much admire is that the approach isn't necessarily about stirring up trouble. There are interest groups that, you know, go around spoiling for a fight in order to generate a court case or get in the headlines. But Counterweight's approach is to advise employees and sometimes, you know, talk them off the ledge and say, actually, this particular program that you're describing isn't so bad, but here are some warning signs. So let's keep an eye on it. And, and that strikes me as a, a very sane approach. Thank you. That, that is what we're aiming for. That negotiation, polite, but firm persistence, arming people with, with knowledge and, um, and diplomacy. And it, it works surprisingly often, and sometimes it, it doesn't, unfortunately. And, um, and then we, we have to offer people um, moral support, mostly. So we, we have our peer support group. And a lot of people have said that just being able to connect to other people, to talk to somebody who understands what's happening and, and connect, um, essentially, and feel heard, is giving them the strength and the confidence to, to deal with the situation as we try to keep things open because you're, you're right we aren't we don't we're not spoiling for a fight most of the time um, nearly every time nobody knows counterweight was involved at all in any kind of negotiation that's that's happened and that has successfully resulted in a company not doing unconscious bias training or mandatory um, anti-racism training based on white fragility or, or something equally um, ideologically biased um, that's so important to start from a place of goodwill 
and to see what can be accomplished that way. And also something else that, that Counterweight is working on, which is important, is at the intellectual level, these movements are, are new, you know, so-called wokeness and, and radical anti-racism. And, and there are good ideas embedded in there as, as well as bad. And there's some real work to be done to figure out how to get the best out of these movements, how to find out what elements can improve society and which are illiberal and authoritarian. And Counterweight is helping do that work too. We are trying. We, we, we have had a, a very few, surprisingly, but a, a few illiberal people come to us with complaints such as there's a trans person in my workplace. Um, doesn't it, How can you help me get rid of them? Uh, we have to say, um, the existence of a trans person is not um, critical social justice being imposed upon you. So um, I'm afraid you'll have to go <laughs> elsewhere for that. But... But yes, we, we shall keep trying to, to get persuade one organization at a time, a patchwork approach and, and build a groundswell. But what, what would you say to, to anybody who feels intimidated, who feels isolated at I'd the moment? I'd say, I suppose this might be too American of a reference, but I'd say dial 1-800-PLUCKROSE. <laughs> oh, that's so charming. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having me. It was great to talk to you. <laughs>